In this video, we'll attempt to go from the definition of a problem all the way through um, so writing the Verilog module and simulating to make sure it works properly. Now, we're going to use Active HDL here as the IDE or the <coughs> integrated development environment for this process. So let's go ahead and get started with the pro with what the problem is that we need to solve. So, <coughs> excuse me. We want to write a program to display the number of ones received in the last 10 input. The system input is serial and it's read only at the falling edge of the clock. So every time a falling edge of the clock comes along, we're going to read what data is on the input. We're going to store it away and we're going to, at every time, we're going to display how many ones we've received in the last 10 clock period. So now that we have kind of a story here, now the next question would be, what is the system diagram? So that's always you want to be something that you do first. So the system diagram for this device is going to basically show what are the inputs, what are the outputs into the system. So in this case, we're going to have a clock, of course, and we have to have an in. Both of these, both of these are digital uh, binary signal. This is one bit. This is one bit. And since we're counting... <clears> to <throat> last 10 clock, the highest number of ones we can have is 10. So the big, so if you have four bit coming out as a count, we will be in good shape. We will be able to count up to 10. So that's a system diagram. By now, from the previous exercises we've done, you know how to write a code or a piece of the module that allows you to um, to define this. Uh, uh, system diagram. So let me make this a little smaller so we can see the code at the same time. <clears throat> As we've talked about before, if I'm writing a module, I have to make sure that my module has a name, sample four, I call it sample four, and then uh, we, the, all, the, all the input and output are listed. We have a count, in, and clock. Now remember that uh, Verilog is case sensitive so um, here it look like I may have used a capital letter but in, in the code I'm using small letter all the way through so there's no confusion now <clears throat> you might have seen we used to define when you start doing this we start defining input clock on one line and then on the next line we said wire clock um, just for simplicity, you can do both the input and the wire, saying it's an input and saying what type it is on the same line, and you can have more than one of the inputs defined if they are the same. <laughs> Another thing that is new, um, and this <clears throat> this can be done both ways, but I think it's preferred, or at least that's the way they show it too, for, for this is an array. So our input, our output is an array of four bits. So, and then the nice thing is in, in Verilog, you can define your arrays beginning and end index. So this, this array called count is our output and is of the register type or the binary with the, with the memory. And it's gonna have four bits in it. And the lowest significant, least significant bit is zero. The most significant bit is four. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we have did okay. So at this point, input and output is defined, <clears throat> and then now we're going to write a code that first will bring all the ones in. Before we do that, we're going to create some internal variables. So we're going to create a buffer, which is an array of bits, which has got ten bits in it, and we're going to initialize it to zero. It's a quick way of initializing an array to zero, and then we have another one called temporary count t count. Uh, which is uh, four bits. <clears throat> now, almost all the work here happens inside the always block here, which is, starts with always. In this case, since the problem wanted us to um, read the thing on the falling edge, the sensitivity um, uh, list for always it has a negative edge. You remember we used to have positive edge in the previous one, now we have negative edge. So it's gonna look at the clock going negative edge when to read the data. So the way always now works is always is gonna be called when clock has a negative edge. It's gonna basically take 
So now we have, uh, if you look at it, we have built, we have a buffer, we've defined this reward call buffer, which has got bit zero through bit nine. <clears throat> and what we're doing is that when we have, when the clock, uh, when the clock is on the falling edge, we're gonna take whatever is on the input and we're gonna put it in this bit. And then the next step is <clears throat> we're gonna increment the index and then when the index gets to 10, which means it's going to be over here, instead of doing 10, we take a mod of 10, which means we'll roll back, roll back up here. So index is going to count 0 to 9 when it reaches 10, because the mod 10 is going to go back to 0. And then what we do is we set the count, t count to 0. Then we have a for loop, much like C for i equal to 0 as long as i is less than 10 i equal to i plus plus 1 so what it does it begins and looks at so it starts with buffer i 0 looks at this is it 1 if it's 1 it's going to increment the t count if it's not going to go to 2 check the same thing all the way to 9 at the end it's going to take the count and put t count and put it in the count which makes it display to the outside world okay now, <clears throat> now that we have the kind of the logic of the code down, the next step is how do I use ver, uh, all the and uh, input this this program that in the, this module that I have written. So what you do, you can download all the student version from uh, I'm sorry, ActiveHDL from Aldec.com. The student copy is available free of charge. Um, great program, very stable. Uh, so I recommend using it uh, for, for learning how Verilog works 